Hello and welcome to The Fridge. Mr. 6507 here, giving you a quick review of my latest time sink. Coin Crypt has been one of my latest roguelikes that can help me pass the time. The game is made by Dumb and Fat Games, which I can confirm as of meeting developers at Too Many Games, none of them are actually dumb and or fat. So on to the gameplay part of the review. Coin Crypt plays out like a regular style roguelike where the purpose is to make it to the end of the dungeon, or in this case, climb the mountain. As you progress from level to level, the game gets harder, changes style and artwork, and new enemies appear, causing game-changing casualties that make you start over from the beginning. Compared to the RPG style of most roguelikes, where you level up and gain powers you go through the dungeon, Coin Crypt takes a different approach. Moves are handled through the use of coins, which you gain as you defeat enemies in open chests. Powers for your character are controlled through classes. Battle happens when an enemy gets near enough to touch your character. In battle mode, time moves in a sort of Final Fantasy-esque way. Time will still move and you must pick coins before your enemy starts hacking your HP away with theirs. As a coin is chose, a set amount of time has passed before the coin is used, and that's where the game gets tense. As of this writing, the game currently has 151 coins, and I believe that the devs are adamant about it staying there for the Pokemon reference. The coins list what they do as you hover over them, so there's no really guessing in game about what they do. The only way the battles can end is if someone runs out of HP, or they run out of coins both of which can happen to you or the enemy. As for the range of enemies, there's about 30 to 45 in the game. Each enemy plays differently, the skeletons attacks hitting hard but backfiring, pirates that hit hard, and thieves do not do physical damage, but instead attempt to steal your coins. Now you can attempt to run, but that will cause your hand and coins to drop, and cause the chest in that room to lock. The game has a class system that really changes how the game plays. My favorite character, for example, is the monkey at this moment. Instead of picking one coin, the monkey throws his whole hand at the uh, enemy and it takes longer to use the coins. It's a game of, how fast can I kill this guy? So there are the quirky characters too, like the zombie, who takes damage all the time and saps health from enemies on hits. Each character except the main adventurer has their own advantages and disadvantages, as normal class systems do. The game also has stores and areas where payment and the thought, LE GASP, of currency comes to mind. In the store, as most roguelikes, there is a bunch of items that can be bought, increased likelihood of X occurring or helping you with Y. But there are also things to keep track of. There are DDs around that will have their own effect and you must make donations of coins along the way to keep them under control so they don't bless your enemies with strange effects that will cause your time to be miserable. There are also healing marks on the floor which, for someone like me, made their donation to them on full health, so I didn't know what it did it until later on. There's an element of risk versus reward, too. There are ghosts floating around in certain levels that say cryptically, LEARN FROM MY MISTAKES, which then, when you open your bag, you must choose from a list of powers that have their own pros and cons. The biggest risk is that once you open your bag, you must pick one of the powers no matter what, forcing you to live with one of your choices. The art direction in this game is very bright and vibrant, so if you made it this far in the game and couldn't figure that out, you may need to see your doctor. Side effects may vary, but are not limited to cutiness, good character design, and the standard Minecraft blockiness. But in all seriousness, the fact that this game isn't pixel art in a pixel art flooded genre is enough to make it die. As for controls on a game like this, this game can be controlled with the arrow keys, WASDA, or even the mouse. The game is perfect if you have a tablet with touch or one of those new fancy newfangled laptops with touch screens. I personally think that this game should be ported to 3DSware because of the way it works well with touch. The biggest con that I can find with this game is performance. The game runs great on my 6 core NVIDIA GPU desktop, but on my older 2 core Lappy, which is aging, the game stu doesn't stutter, but as with most 3D games, it actually slows down to about 75% of the regular speed at which the game runs at. The minimum specs on Steam are a 1.5GHz processor, but the one on my laptop is 2.2GHz, and the graphics hold for a 32MB card or higher, which most integrated graphics in the last almost 7 years is better than, including my laptop. There's also one thing about the game that drives me batty, I mean your mileage may vary, but that's the fact that the screen's in 4.3 resolution. It just bothers me. And it makes sense for the size of the rooms, but there should be sidebars if it's going to look like that. So, finishing up this review, if you have time to burn a decent laptop in the last 3 or 4 years, this may just be the game for you. I see loads of potential in this game, mostly because of how simple it is to play. There's a learning curve about the size of the juice bump, and that's about it. You just have to learn how to draw coins fast and how to deal with enemies. 
The art style is so vibrant that it makes me happy loading up the game and the music is the same way. If you have $6.99, you can pick up the game on Steam and Early Access. I don't recommend throwing your money at the screen like in the game though, because you might just do plus 4 damage.